directly related are your operations to Catherine Gale and her ideas, but obviously uh, there's there's an obvious connection there. Um, <laughs> Uh, so it, your ideas moving forward are based on her open primary final five voting ideals, basically. That's that's the model that we're most excited about. That's what Alaska but, is taking. That's the Alaska election model. They Alaska did top four. Wisconsin would be final five. Four or five is better than two terrible choices for sure, right? Yeah. And the, and the problem with the top two open primary, such as California or uh, Washington State, we just saw this happen with, you know, uh, Adam Schiff's campaign for U.S. Senate, where his super PAC spent over $10 million to handpick the weakest opponent. And if you're in a top four or top five system, you can't spend enough money to pick three or four weak opponents. It, it solves the problem of people spending money to, to try to pick the weaker opponent. Okay, that was one of my questions actually. So we're on the same wavelength there. So what are, what are the concerns about the potential of somebody dumping a bunch of money and trying to get you know, the weakest candidate up front uh, in an open primary? But it doesn't, that, that goes away basically with- it, the with, four, with four or five people making it to November, we think yeah. it goes away. I mean, you would have to just spend a boatload of money to try to rig a, a instant runoff top four. It, it's so much harder. You know, there's there's a, a an Air Force veteran who teaches at the Staff College in, in Alabama. He's wicked smart. He wrote a white paper on how final five elections from a national security perspective, in his opinion, they would be far more difficult to manipulate because you, you just right with an instant runoff with five people how do you figure out who to take out or who to malign or what right it's just it just makes sense that it would be more secure but our opponents in in both parties say just the opposite without any without any rationale or, or proof behind it well, I'd say the only current proof is that uh, isn't there a Democratic member of is it the Senate that is, you know, uh, been caught receiving bribes from Egypt? Oh, right. Right. So sure. I'd say that they absolutely, you know, that the current system already has uh, foreign agents inside of it. So right. it can't necessarily yes. get worse. Sure. Okay. I've always admired Miss Gale's work. and She does have a book. Um, yes, <laughs> I normally hold it up. It's, it's called the politics industry. Okay. And, and we originally launched as veterans for political innovation in part because Catherine Gale founded the Institute for political innovation. Okay. She did provide us with a little bit of seed funding. We've since kind of parted ways, but she was very instrumental in, in helping us launch. And we're really grateful for that. So. Very good. Yeah. Um, there was, oh, and then I was going to mention, so the politics industry book, that that's, the podcast is fantastic for economics radio called America's Hidden Duopoly. That's Catherine and Michael Gale presenting their early research. That became the politics industry book that came out in 2020. And then I would also love to highly recommend this book that just came out about two weeks ago called The Primary Solution. Nick Troiano is the executive director of Unite America. They are a partner uh, and, and grantor of ours. Um, the primary solution, as you might have guessed, right, it, it, it's all about fixing our primary problem. Okay. Our primary political problem, we think, is partisan primary elections, which I already said earlier. We're not anti-party. Parties serve a purpose. Parties are important. Um, we just want there to be a level playing field for every, all voters and for all candidates, regardless of what kind of party they're with or, or not at all. all right. This is good information. I appreciate you taking the time to speak with us tonight. Thanks. Would it be helpful for me to run through the list of 10 states real quick, or I, I don't want to overwhelm you all? Um, no. For the sake of my note taking, it would be nice to know yes. uh, where there's sure. initiatives. That's a beginning. Absolutely. So we've talked about Alaska. The Alaska election model uh, is under threat of being repealed. I don't know if any of you are tracking this. The opponents, so basically the folks who lost under the new system, 
are trying to repeal it. They're blaming the system rather on the, rather than blaming their own unpopularity. Um, so they formed Alaskans for honest, <laughs> Alaskans for honest elections, and they are funneling money through a church. Um, and this is all you can read about this. There's been litigation over it of ninety thousand dollars through a church, and they call themselves Alaskans for Honest Elections. And they're trying to repeal the top four open, uh, well, yeah, so question about is it legal? So, no, you know, if you're doing political activity, right, and if you're trying to do a ballot amendment or, or you, you can't do that through a, a church. Um, and so they've gotten in trouble for that, but they did gather enough signatures we think their repeal effort is going to be on the November ballot. So so mission number one is to defend Alaska, to get people in Alaska to vote no. If you know anyone who lives in Alaska, please tell them to vote no on this repeal effort or please connect them with us. Uh, that's number one. Number two, Nevada, I talked about, has a ballot amendment for final five voting. So that'll be a open, unified primary. Top five finishers for each race go to November and then instant runoff voting, sometimes called ranked choice voting. Uh, Oregon has a statewide ballot amendment for ranked choice voting. If that passes, Oregon would be similar to Maine, using ranked choice voting, but inside of partisan primaries. Oregon has closed primaries, which really is uh, upsetting, you know, that uh, it's somewhere around a million uh, independents can't vote in Oregon. Um, Idaho has a top four open primary ballot initiative. Montana has uh, two ballot initiatives that if they both pass, would implement final four. Uh, Colorado is going to have a ballot initiative that should be announced within the next three to four weeks. Colorado top four open primaries. Arizona has a ballot initiative for top two open primaries. Actually, it's open primaries, and then the state legislature will get to decide whether it's two, four, or five. Um, so that's an interesting one, a little bit different. South Dakota has top two open primary ballot amendment, ballot initiative. Um, and then Wisconsin has led bipartisan legislation pending for final five voting for Congress only. And then Pennsylvania has legislation, bipartisan legislation pending to get rid of their closed primaries and, and let independents vote in either the Republican or Democratic primary, which we call a semi-open primary. In Missouri, we have the same thing as an independent. I can choose either the Republican or Democratic primary. So people often say, Eric, what are you complaining about? You're an independent. You can pick either one. And I tell them the story that I live in the district of a very extreme Democratic member of Congress who has an opponent this time, whoever wins that primary is automatically gonna win because it's a blue district. But the rest of my state is a deep red state. So whoever wins all the other races is automatically gonna win in November. So which primary ballot do I pick, you know, to vote against the very extreme Democrat or the very extreme Republicans? And that's where I'm stuck. And that's what we need to get rid of. Sir. Yes. Thank you for all that. Um, do, you do you count each, uh, each potential step forward as as a win, you know, like you you're talking about in some cases. It's it's a top two. It's like oh, that's not much. We we still count it as a win, right? Because we believe in incremental change, and and we really believe that if you build momentum around these reforms, it will just build even more momentum, right? So it's it's the first step that we hope will lead to more. Um, another thing that's happening, some of you might be tracking this, today in Missouri, our state legislature passed a joint resolution to make our citizens initiative process nearly impossible to use, right? So we have the ballot amendment here in Missouri. The current system, you can amend our constitution with just a 50%, simple 50% majority. They now are going to change that to you have to get a majority statewide and a majority in five out of the eight districts, which means in you know rural Missouri is gonna have this outsized power. And, and my wife's from rural Missouri. I love rural Missouri. Uh, I have nothing against it, right? But now about 30% of Missourians will be able to shoot down any type of citizens initiative based on this new plan they're proposing. So we're trying to prevent there's a new coalition called Respect Voters, 
it's respectvoters.org, and they're just trying to prevent states that have the ballot initiative. It's under attack, you know, from the state legislatures who don't want people to have that that power. They want to take it away. 